What's up, guys? Wait, Welcome no, back. Don't start. I'm not here because this seat makes a lot of sound, and I would like to cut it out. <laughs> and I can't. If you start talking already. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's begin. Okay. New podcast. New day. New topics. Welcome back to TikTok. Yeah, last few times you said uh, welcome. <laughs> no, 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 you said no. welcome to another standard time, and uh-huh. then standard time. You said welcome to talking, talking watches. <laughs> but now we're back. Now we're back. All right. To the TikTok. Cool. All right. Uh, so, what is the topic today, Ashwin? Today we're looking at mid-priced luxury watches. Yes. That's a very vague term. I think it's very expensive, actually. But it's quite expensive. But it's <laughs> it's just below the holy trinity. Mm-hmm. You can decide what your holy trinity is, but we consider it Vacheron, AP, and Patek. Most people consider that a high-end. A yeah, but a lot of people much. say that JLC should be there mm, instead yeah. of uh, one of them. I don't know which. Yeah. But then, then it wouldn't Rolex. be a trinity, because you know. But like, instead of one of them. Ah, instead of one of them. And uh-huh. they s- they always say Rolex definitely should also be in the mix. I don't know what that that <laughs> means, <the> but. <laughs> All right, so what are the pieces we're looking at today? Okay, so uh, just to like narrow it down, we're looking at four pieces today. We are looking at the Blanc Pound 50 Fathoms, Bathys Cup, a Rolex Submariner date, the 1166-10 LN. So that's the newest uh, Rolex Submariner date. And the other two pieces we're looking at are the Chopard Alpine Eagle, Alpine, Alpine. I think Alpine, and we're also looking at the the, the hottest release right now, the Bulgari Octo Finissimo the automatic. The, I think the regular one, yeah, mm, the regular. on steel. I think that's why it's kind of hyped now. Yeah. Finally, they came out with a mm. with a with a steel I think, brushed version steel huh? what version, yeah. So do you want to okay. begin with the uh, Rolex? I mean, so, everyone likes that. <laughs> everyone likes the Rolex. Everyone knows a bit about it. A uh, retail price uh, is uh, eight hundred. Uh, eight thousand. Oh, if it was eight hundred, <laughs> I would get, <laughs> totally get it. Um, eight thousand uh, eight hundred and fifty US dollars. Uh, it has it's probably a, around uh, eight thousand euros then. Yeah, it's around eight thousand three hundred euros. Okay, uh, but of course that's I think without taxes. Like no, no, that's it. with must be with must right because you generally don't see the price without taxes in Europe. In Europe, okay. Uh, so it has the thirty one thirty five movement, of course, cost certified. Uh, it's uh, three hundred mo- uh, meters water resistant, and a uh, uh, forty eight pow- uh, forty eight hour power reserve, uh, forty millimeters, and it comes on an oyster bracelet. You know, despite how much people love the Submariner and just mm. r- Rolex steel pieces, I, I don't think the movements pack anything special. Mm. So, like, this is something I pointed out, uh, or, like, I want to point out, uh, which uh, throughout this research I was doing. So, it has uh, a parachrome uh, blued hair spring. Okay. So they. But do do we care about that when you can't see it? <laughs> exactly. This is like, okay, it's blued, but, like, nobody can see it because it's not a case pack, so, huh. Do we really care? But then it's also nice just to know, okay, there's something special going on down there. No, okay. So I wanted to ha- point out the hairspring because when I go now to the... Uh, uh, not, now I'm uh, talking about the Blanc Pound 50 Fathoms uh, Patis Cap. Uh, it's, it has a caliber 1315. It is a 12, uh, 120 hour power reserve. Uh, in-house movement. A three hundred equal is the same as the Rolex Submariner, three hundred meter water resistance, uh, with a forty three millimeter like case size. case size exactly, and it can either come on a NATO or a sailor strap. So I wanted to point out the hairspring because a uh, Blanc Pang and uh, Rolex have two different technologies when it comes to hairsprings and how to deal with the anti magnetism like properties of it. So Blanc Pang comes with a uh, a silicon balance hairspring. So Most people do silicon nowadays. Nowadays, like because they have uh, like the technology and stuff, and I yeah. think it's technology from the Swatch Group. Okay. Uh, yeah, because I think even Tissot has got uh, uh, exactly exactly s- silicon hairspring. So uh, like I don't think lower end Tissots have it, but like a uh, middle range Tissots now come with a silicon balanced hairspring, which is like a uh, because silicon has no magnetic properties. That's like perfect for a uh, for like anti magnetism and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that the Rolex Mariner is not 
uh, anti-magnetic. anti-magnetic. Like they they have the technology, but not I, I think this specific yeah, material. They, they just don't hype it. I mean, most mm. manufacturers ha- use the silicon hairspring as a selling point. Mm, exactly, exactly. So like Omega comes with their uh, like they, very good yeah they have anti-magnetic so properties. much focus on and they have like fifteen thousand gauss mm. resistance. No, exactly, and like I I, I th- there was. I, Help me, help me remember. There was one watch uh, that beat the milk house without it being... Just the regular planet ocean beats the milk house by 15 times. Because milk house essentially means 1,000 gauss. Mm-hmm. And that's how much magnetism it's designed to resist. Mm-hmm. But the regular planet ocean caliber 8800, I think, yep. the one they released quite a few years ago, mm-hmm. that itself just casually had 15,000 gauss. And nobody gauss better than I. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> so the term milk gauss doesn't really hold any water mm. which just comes to show that Rolex should in the future should do maybe. something with their movements that no, no no with the mill gals because like yeah, that, that line hasn't been updated it's, it's not time. been popular first of all really until recently for uh, some reason in the last uh, I think okay. last six months uh-huh. it's just been really hyped J- just the milk house. I think it's because people couldn't get any other steel <laughs> watch apart from the oh. milk house because they were not selling well. Okay. And then anyone who could get the milk house got a milk house and now that's evolving into the mm. trend. Mm. And uh, now as we know that the market has dropped a little until the 2020 price increase, which yeah. is frustrating. But it doesn't affect us any way. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Because stuff on the grey market is always going to hold a premium, I think. Mm. At least for the next few years. For the next few years, yeah, exactly. So, um, eh, but the other thing is, eh, with the mail there are a couple of lines when it comes. Like, there's green uh, dial, but then, like, the black They have some kind of s- green sapphire or something, something like that. Uh-huh, right? uh-huh. So, that's, like, that's sort of, like the regular mail but they also come in white and in black, which are just, like, impossible. Yeah, white and orange and black yeah. and orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're just impossible to get. Or, like, really? Yeah. I thought people like the green crystal. Yeah, no, people do like it, but, like, it... Eh, the the black one and the uh, and the white one are very difficult to get even uh, in like second hand markets. Oh, I see. They're at a premium. Uh-huh. Okay, Ooh. coming back uh-huh, to the, coming the back. Mariner. Okay, how does it hold for it with, in comparison to the Blanc Pong? So the Blanc Pong comes at a retail price of a uh, ten thousand five hundred dollars U.S. dollars, a uh, or twelve thousand a uh, if you want it on titanium. Ah, uh, that I would never take that honestly. <laughs> I, I can see why it's much more difficult to produce a watch in titanium and how it might have better properties in general. Mm. But to the person that's not using the watch for anything, really, it's a waste. <laughs> uh, so, like, overall, the, like, what I think about like, the difference between a Rolex Submariner and a Blanc Pang 50 Fathoms Batis Cup is that a, the Submariner is just a perfect everyday watch. You can have it, you can just have it uh, for your whole life. Okay. And it will hold up forever. And it won't, uh, like, it won't go with modes, with uh, trends. Uh, like, it will just be a stable mark on everything. W- the Blanc Pan, uh, in my opinion, is for someone who wants... Who something knows about something it. more, wants something a bit uh-huh. more than... So wants something different, who knows regular, about the history. Because yeah. uh, Blanc Pass has so much history. They were, uh, they cr- were the creators of the modern... Original kind of dive watch, uh-huh, right? Of the modern dive watch. Uh-huh. Yeah. So like, if you go to the website, that's what they say. They created the modern watch. Yeah, they precede the Submariner by mm-hmm. a few years. By a few years. Uh, that's when, uh, like, Blanc Pan history. Then also, you can... Uh, Blanc Pan has never done a, a quartz piece they have never That's done nice. a quartz piece and they That's will never unique. do a quartz piece and they're I think the but, but only th- to be fair the Samana never came in quartz right ooh I'm not sure I about this so. but I I, so. I, I'm quite confident it never came in quartz because I've never yeah. seen an oyster quartz written on a Samana or something like that uh-huh. I don't think it did, it did come in quartz okay but now in today's market there's nothing special about the Samana Exactly. So, like, for someone who wants something else, that's, uh, in my opinion, where the big Blanc Pan 50 Fountain comes in. I think, I think the only reason not many people buy the Blanc Pan is mm-hmm. because the grey market value is lower than the retail. And that's where you that's should say... That's sad. I don't know, but then that's where you should say... say okay, it's a, it's you a should get it. killer buy, you're saying. Exactly. It's a killer buy because uh, it drops quite a, quite, a, quite a big amount. I think it drops about 25-30% of mm-hmm. its value. 
yeah on the gray market mm-hmm. but the issue with that is no one wants to buy them new then yeah so that's bad for the brand it's bad for the brand but like a eh, it's good for <laughs> consumers i guess yeah but they're not that many of them hmm. as a result of all of this because mm-hmm. if it's bad for the brand they'd sell less there's less on the market mm-hmm. okay okay yeah yeah i agree Okay, but then uh, the other like um, a criticism that the blank pan has is that it does not come on a, a metal strap. It either comes on a NATO strap or it comes on a sailor strap. So like they call it sailor, but it's kind of like a cloth. A yeah, it's it's more of a tool watch, and they kind of market it that way too. Mm-hmm. And like a submano, which is more of a statement piece mm-hmm. to be worn. With fashion, I mean suits or something. Okay. But what, what, what do you what's think special about, about one sec? Yeah. Just wanted to go over the the technical specs of mm. the blank pot. I, I think they have a really high powers of right. Yes, about 100, 100 hours or something. 120 hours of. Power. 120 hours of power compared of, compared to the four 48, 48. of Samana. Yeah. Wow, 120 for yeah. for a simple dive watch. That's impressive. I've never mm. seen that. Yeah, yeah, and an automatic watch as well. I mean, it, to be fair, the Swatch System 51 has a hundred hour. Mm. Power reserve, but that thing is not in the same league, and we're not no, kind exactly. of talking same caliber watch. Mm-hmm. And in in that price range, especially, and in that category, I'd say mm. of mid tier, high end luxury. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh-huh. The cal- caliber thirteen fifteen is also like very beautiful. Uh, yeah, because you can look at it through the see through case uh, back. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And that's something I forgot to mention. Like, a, it does have a sapphire case back, which allows you to look into the movement and it allows you to see the silicon uh, balanced hair spring and like the jewels uh, just positioned there. And like, I really appreciate that on a dive watch because hmm. typically when, when people make dive watches, they always have a solid case back because it's a dive watch. Why the hell do you need a see through hmm. case back? Yeah, yeah. And like, the the sapphire case back does not compromise the 300 meter water resistant it has more than that actually i couldn't care less about the 300 meters of water resistance i mean it is a dive watch so <laughs> yeah but it's, it's never going to be used so that doesn't yeah. really maybe for the the history value mm-hmm, for, for that for that i mean it's useful mm-hmm. to have and maybe it's part of the brand now mm-hmm. but I w- want to see a see-through case back on every single watch. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see that. Huh. I mean, it would be nice because, like, a look, a I-, I would really want to see the a thirty-one thirty-five a Rolex movement because it does have a uh, different color um screws a, and uh-huh, like the blue screws, and uh, the blue hairspring, a the ruby or whatever that like pink the jewels, thing. yeah, uh-huh, like the jewels. Then a I think also the the plates. They have different the, colors. The machining on the plates also. Mm-hmm. The machining on the plates. All this stuff that is so beautiful, but you cannot see it. And most people will never see them. On the yeah, place. but that's because in the same price range to that, mm-hmm. uh, all the other pieces have much better finishing gold rotors and decorated yeah. rotors, etc. No, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Alright, okay. so, so should we get on to the... The new Should one, the Octo Finissimo. We can talk about the uh, Chopard then the Octo Finissimo. Yeah. Okay, I'd like to go with the Octo Finissimo first because it mm-hmm. ties in better with the Submariner. Mm-hmm. I think it's Bulgari's proposition to the Rolex Submariner to, to break into the same market. Okay, I would, I, I would agree into the same market, but I wouldn't agree that the Octo Finissimo is a direct competition to the Submariner. Yeah, it's not because it's such a different watch it's not a dive watch i would watch. rather say that it's a direct competition to like a, a royal oak or yes like, not but it's not quite priced in the same yes league. yes exactly it's not quite priced on the same league it's kind of priced in the size of like the maurice lacroix no 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 the maurice lacroix is two three thousand oh really okay yeah. okay the icon mm. yeah yeah the icon okay 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 yeah. continue continue with the end yeah, so I think it's really unique. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't see that kind of innovation in most companies these days mm-hmm. now. They usually have one product line and they stick to it and mm-hmm. iterate it. But no one kind of really breaks into the, the same segment mm-hmm. that ha- has existed for a while. So you always had the AP Royal Oak, you had the Nautilus, you mm-hmm. had the Aquanaut, which was just below. Mm-hmm. 
And until recently, the Aquanaut was not at all favoured yeah. by anyone, really. And then you had the Vacheron Overseas line, uh-huh. Vacheron which overseas fit uh, right in the middle of between ten and twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, euros, whatever you pick. Hmm. It's pretty much the same number because it's <laughs> that. But it's it's nice because the Octofinissimo retails at twelve thousand US dollars, or I think almost fourteen thousand euros. Mm-hmm. That's a bit ridiculous, but I think it fits right above the Sabana. Okay. And it fits right below the trilogy These, uh-huh, trilogy uh-huh. pieces. Yeah. And I think JLC has a lot of pieces in that range too. Mm-hmm. But they're not as hot as the Octofinissimo right now. Mm-hmm. Because of its 2.23 millimeter movement. No, exactly. Because uh, like Bulgari just like came out with this a uh, huge innovation in design yeah such a statement piece such a statement piece uh it's so thin a uh, like the bracelet uh, integrates Integrated, so yeah. nicely with the watch and it's it's very distinct you you, you mm. don't see that many kind of squared off watches you see more rectangular things like the santos and maybe a tank and the reverser but you don't really see square pieces apart from uh Tychoia. Uh-huh, like a Monaco but then like uh, the square pieces that are still uh, to these days like around is because they're iconic yeah mm-hmm. but what I think is really unique about the Bulgari is the, the movement the mm. specifically 2.23 millimeters it's not the thinnest movement but really I mean who cares when you get down to around 2 millimeters <laughs> and a fraction of a millimeter is not that important I think but and it's really nice to look at, and they have the display case back, mm. wow. and the micro rotor. That's quite unique because it's entirely platinum. Oh! Since when you have a micro rotor, you need to have a lot of additional mass, right? Uh-huh. So to compensate, make make a more uh, a higher yeah. So of an earth that thing uh-huh. is solid platinum. And in twenty seventeen, they first came out with the titanium one, mm-hmm. because I think till now titanium was also kind of hyped. I think it's still a little too hyped unnecessarily. Hmm. But that's my opinion. Okay. Maybe people <laughs> like titanium and like getting their watches scratched. But <laughs> but in 2018 they came out with a sandblasted steel. Honestly, that doesn't look too different from titanium because okay. it's not shiny either. Okay. And it it wasn't too much of a difference apart from the pink gold sandblasted one. Mm-hmm. And now finally they have the regular plain, I think, steel. brushed steel. Mm. which is what everyone wants mm. and they have kept the same movement uh, but the watch is still really hot mm. so an interesting uh, thing you found out whilst you were researching about this is that they also have the tourbillon yeah they, they've they got the tourbillon with the, the same line the Octofinissimo tourbillon mm. and they made that movement I think 0.3 of a millimeter thinner than the regular automatic wow. <laughs> which is insane and that's quite a marvel but I, I don't know if, I mean that's that's an entirely different league of yeah, watch it's, uh-huh, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a fun just, fact a, but uh-huh. it's not in the core of what we're discussing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but that's just insane <laughs> wow. and also for, for the latest steel one they increase the water resistance to 100 meters I think you care about this more than I do uh, so like at, I I do want uh, most of my watches to be a hundred meters water resistance mostly because a uh, I don't want to care when I jump into a pool. About You're not gonna take a fifteen thousand uh, euro or dollar watch into a pool. When do you <laughs> see yourself doing this? <laughs> like d- d- what? Okay, let's say you are in a pool party. And yeah, you're and that's watch. what you choose to wear to the pool party because you did not know there was going to be a pool party. <laughs> okay, okay, let's see. Uh, you're in the lake, you're wearing your watch. You're in the lake, you chose to go to the lake wearing a 15,000 piece. <laughs> I mean, it, it's better to be wearing it than like if you put it uh, like next to your, your stuff in the bag. You know, that's... Yeah, that's, that's true. Mm-hmm. But if you know where you're going, then you dress appropriately. You dress it's not like you go to a pool party and be like, oh, I, I'm just going to swim in this suit. <laughs> yeah. No, it was like, I, I always want to be safe with, like, at least when it comes to, like, that type of water resistance. I yeah. think, unfortunately, the camera's running out of battery. Okay. Ooh. So let's move on to uh, 
the Chopard piece. Okay. I think it's out of all of these. I don't. I think people receive the Chopard the, with the least amount of interest. I mean, mm-hmm. it's still extremely hot, but mm-hmm. out of these four pieces, I think uh, people are not seeking after the Chopard as much. Mm. Right now, it might change in six months. You really don't know. But so a little bit about the Alpine Eagle. It's uh, twelve thousand nine hundred US dollars. Um, so just a bit more than the Octofinissimo. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's a good idea. Honestly, I think it should have been priced under, but mm. two thousand less. And they also have an in-house movement cost certified. They have the forty-one millimeter and the thirty-six. Uh, the 41 has a 01.01c movement, 36 has a 09.01c. Okay. Really, really means nothing, but the 41 millimeter movement, um, it has 28,800 vibrations. Okay, okay, okay. But both of them are in house? or Yeah, both are in house. Okay. And the smaller one has a slightly lowered rate of 25,200. Mm-hmm. And 41 has the date, all of these facts you don't really care about. But what's special about them is the the steel. I think that's kind of been hyped. Mm. It's called Lucent Steel uh, Grade A223. And A223 signifies the hardness. Mm -hmm. And they use the Vickers hardness test. And so I think 223 is, I think, the force value. I don't know, Newtons or... Pascals, not too Pas- sure. Uh-huh, probably Pascals. Uh, th- overall thickness is 9.7 millimeters, so fairly thin, fits under the cuff, but not something special. Hmm. And its movement itself is about 5 millimeters, so I think the movement of the watch itself is about the thickness of the oh. Finissimo. <laughs> oh, okay. So nothing too special about the watch, it's just their statement piece. It looks a lot like the Royal Oak. I think they're trying to break into that market, that's why they priced it so high. Uh, Personally, I'm not that much of a fan, but their dials are just immaculate. I think Ooh. the dial is the best thing about that watch, not the integrated bracelet or the case mm-hmm. or the finishing. And I think that has uh, that might have something to do with Chopard not being a, like a from the very start a watch manufacturer, but a jeweler manufacturer. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why probably the dials are like beautiful because uh, they Maybe know how to make catch uh-huh, light. Uh-huh. It catches. They, they know how to play with light then. Exactly. Like their but so let's kind of round it up and so what would you pick from these four? I know so, I'm going to pick the Octo Finissimo. Oh really? Yeah. Ah, oh, I w- I would have I would have not guessed that. I'm a big fan of the 50 Fathoms, uh-huh. but I like the Moonface one, the the new one a Ooh. lot. That's one of my favorite pieces. I I really like that piece more. Mm. And of course, it, it's not in this price. We're not looking at budget and we're not actually purchasing any of this so all of your opinions would change based on, you, based on when that, you have uh-huh. to spend money. Exactly. So I would definitely get the blank pun in that case. <laughs> but if you just simply look at it as a watch, as an aesthetic piece, hmm. then I would go with the Octofinissimo. Okay. So I would uh, go for the 50,000 uh, Batistica. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, yeah, it's it, appeared, it appeared that the camera cut out. Camera cut out. Um, uh, but just rounding up, uh, like the, the overall. Yeah, we were saying that uh, I was saying that I would pick the Octofinissimo. Mm-hmm. You were going blank punk. I was going blank punk mostly because of uh, the technology. Uh, the Swatch Group is just pushing a uh, technological innovation, so that's why I would go for the blank punk and also the design. Uh, the syringe hands, it just looks like a. Like it's very a clean. Oh, it's so clean. But the like thing is, you could also see that. The dial's quite large, and mm. it's not got any yes. complication. No, exactly, exactly. So that's why I uh, do agree a, with you. It fits a diver specification. Uh-huh. You know? It fits a diver specification. But then I would also agree with you that the better uh, alternative to this one would be the uh, Batiscap with the moon face. Yeah, Because then really it adds like extra that. complication yeah. and adds more to look at into the watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but those are overall opinions. Tell us what you guys think about uh, these four watches we discussed. Uh, do you care about the technology or just the design or even uh, like the dial, as you were saying, for the Chopard? Uh, Another unique thing I forgot to mention about mm-hmm. the Octo Finissimo was yep. the power reserve, which is 60 hours. Mm. For 2.23 millimeters, I think that's really impressive. Mm, okay, so I mean, it's 60 hours is nothing special in terms of general watches, mm-hmm. but compared to the Submariner, which is 48. I mean, that's sad. No, exactly. Like, wow, 48 hours for a Submariner. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, they should really start innovating and competing. Exactly. But because uh, Swatch Group has, they're very comfortable right now. Yeah, mm. I think that about concludes it. What would you pick? Do you really like the Octo Finissimo, mm-hmm. or do you think uh, the forty millimeter case size being square is way too large, and you just like the integrated bracelet? Yeah. I could see a lot of people feeling that way. Mm. And do you really have any strong opinions on the Chopard? Because we we're quite I mean, indifferent about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, uh uh-huh. watch community in general doesn't have many feelings about it, but uh huh. Yeah, because everyone just felt that they're following the AP kind of line, mm. AP Hublot right. design. Yeah. Yeah. So, tell us uh, what you guys think, and then uh, see you next time.